I'm the teacher librarian at El Cajon Valley High School in East San Diego County. And we are very proud of our CTE pathways here. We have a, a, a manufacturing and fabrication pathway. A lot of our welders go into that. We have um, a culinary pathway uh, and we have a medical biology pathway and we're, we're seeking to grow that. Um, all of our pathways, we're, we're definitely invested in our district to, to promote uh, CTE. Oh, and I can't believe I almost forgot our arts, media and entertainment pathway. Uh, it's, it's really cool to see them go out into the community and, and get some real world experience uh, with local governments and companies doing a lot of their web design work and video production and other fun things. And um, so this presentation is about uh, universal, universal demonstrations of learning. Hopefully you're noticing the UDL um, uh, hint there. And uh, through this presentation, I definitely hope that you, you get how um, digital portfolios can be used uh, universally. You can, you can use them for uh, lots of different types of demonstrations of learning, and that's a great reason why it ties in so well with um, uh, CTE, uh, with uh, career pathways, because you're using so many different methods to assess student learning. Um, it's, it's not, it's not going to be the traditional path that, that a lot of students might be used to. So I'm seeing in the chat a lot of um, a variety of pathways. Uh, we have dance and um, like office skills and um, online media skills, culinary, computer stuff, um, AmeriCorps, amazing. And, oh, this is great. Adult school, yes. So I'm planning on trying to monitor the chat throughout um, my presentation. If I miss a, a big question that's burning uh, in somebody's curiosity, feel free to interrupt me um, or um, I'm also willing to be reminded of those at the end if we've got some time to answer additional questions. And of course, my email and everything will be at the end. If I didn't get to your question, uh, you're very welcome to reach out to me. I would love to, to connect with other people that are giving digital portfolios a try. Uh, so again, universal digital portfolios, universal demonstrations of learning. Um, my information, once again, if you're not able to see my face on the screen, I look mostly like this, except I am not wearing glasses today because I got to pick up contacts. So I like to start with just a definition. Sometimes um, it's not totally clear what a digital portfolio is to some folks. So just so we're all clear, we're talking about a website that gets built up over time that uh, people students add pages and they add pages and they add pages to one website. And um, the purpose there, I think there are a lot of different ways to use a digital portfolio, to use a website as a reflection of student learning or to use a website to demonstrate learning. Uh, the main ones that I focus on and I promote a lot are uh, using a digital portfolio as a showcase for student personal bests, their big accomplishments, like the things they're most proud of. I think digital portfolios, um, Sometimes teachers, educators think of them as like a digital refrigerator where the, the good, awesome, amazing stuff goes from a student. And they sometimes say that like, oh, it's, it's not that important. It's just putting something up on the refrigerator, like big deal. It's actually, I think, really an important part of a student owning their own learning story to be able to decide what goes up there. To be able to document learning over time to track progress, I think is a, a really interesting use of digital portfolios for a student to be able to recognize their own growth and, and show um, increased abilities around a skill, uh, around a, a really important learning goal, that is huge for students. And it doesn't always get reflected in like grades or transcripts. And being able to show evidence of the acquisition of essential skills and learning outcomes. I think at the end of the day, at the end of the quarter, at the end of the semester, our students get a grade from us or at the end of the unit, they get a score. Um, and the score uh, as a number or the grade as a letter doesn't really show much to anybody outside of a school environment. It doesn't, and CTE is all about um, demonstrating learning to a wider audience and, and, and industry standards. And an A in uh, welding 
doesn't really say what a person can do as a welder. An A in culinary arts doesn't, doesn't do that either. But if uh, a student has a digital portfolio where they're representing their skills uh, and, and the learning outcomes that they, that they have uh, uh, reached, that would probably be way more valuable than a list of grades or a list of scores to people outside of school. So that's a big part of why I thought um, this ties in so well with, with CTE. So um, as a student builds up their digital portfolio over time, um, it becomes a, a reflection of their learning story. It tells them a richer version of their learning story than what we as teachers can say or what their diploma can say or what, what uh, their list of grades on a transcript can say. It's, it's uh, students developing a more intimate relationship with their learning story and it empowers them to tell their own learning story. And um, instead of looking at something like a GPA, uh, which doesn't mean a lot to students, especially after they leave us, uh, to be able to show that these are the skills that I got in my time at this place of learning. And that's something that um, will help them see themselves as a learner which is really what we want our students to leave us with. You are a learner, um, recognize the learning you've done. You do have skills. You might have a 1.9 GPA, but you're leaving it with some valuable things. Or even with a 4.0. I've definitely had students who have graduated with super high GPAs that still felt really unsure about whether or not they were ready for the next level. Um, and I think it's something like a digital portfolio definitely helped them understand how ready they were. So again, um, those three purposes that I mentioned for digital portfolios, I think they tie in very well with CTE, with, with uh, career pathways, with a lot of the pathways that you're posting in the chat, the 3D printing, the dancing, the uh, health pathway. These things can be represented on digital portfolios in really meaningful ways, I think. First of all, showing learning over time, that's hard to do uh, with something like a grade because at the end of the time, the grade becomes static. But a digital portfolio, you can show growth over time. And a student can look back if they've documented their, their learning journey. They can really understand the growth that they've done. And that's huge for a learner. Um, being able to demonstrate essential skills and learning outcomes, we want our learners and our CTE pathways to develop and demonstrate some pretty specific things. Uh, I, I'm a, I taught English for 10 years and then I became the librarian. So a lot of the things I wanted my students to demonstrate were English things like, can, can you read critically? Can you uh, form an argument? Well, uh, prove it with evidence. But in a, in a culinary pathway, um, we're, we're talking about food safety, right? And we're talking about, do you know how to handle um, cutlery? Do you know how to, do you know how to prepare um, food to be able to serve it to a patron like those are um, skills that you what does it mean if you give somebody a seven out of ten on a quiz on that stuff it doesn't mean very much but if the student is used to demonstrating and gathering evidence of that that's huge and then showcasing personal bests and big accomplishments that is um, like the certifications maybe that they achieved through your pathway or the big projects that they did that they can really uh, they should be proud of and show off. I like um, digital portfolios and for the same reason uh, I think CTE is really valuable that there's this is a graphic from George Kuros um, created by uh, it's the ideas from George Kuros and Sylvia Duckworth I, did, I think that the illustration but maybe you've seen it before and it shows the difference between school uh, and learning and as educators, we like to think oh, they're, they're both the same. School is learning, learning is school. And um, if you get a chance to come back to this, I definitely, or if you've seen it before, you've read through this and thought, yeah, this side of the graphic is very much the game of school. And when we think about the way we really do learn, it looks a lot like this. And one of my statements about digital portfolios is a digital portfolio allows you to capture more of this stuff, more of the learning stuff. It allows you to value more of this stuff, more of the learning stuff. And that's one of the reasons that I just really like them. Um, again, digital portfolios allow you to show learning over time. You can document, it's really easy. Space on a page is cheap and you can always make more pages on a website. Really great for CTE. 
showcasing your personal bests and your big accomplishments. It's another great way to use digital portfolios. It's um, when you when you complete that big project, when when you have that big um, demonstration day where the community comes in and sees the things that you've done, uh, when the families get to see the the learning that has happened, document those and celebrate those. The event is amazing. Um, the the presentation is great. Good job. But let's capture it. Let's 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 put it somewhere where we can show it to other people later. Maybe not who couldn't come to the event or potentially employers in the future or admissions people or scholarship folks. And this is the one I like to focus on, demonstrating essential skills. And I would love it if you would all take a moment, let me zoom in on the question. And I'm just curious, um, I saw a variety of really cool sounding pathways uh, in the chat earlier. I would love it if you would take the time to type in some specific skills or specific learning outcomes that you have for your students in your career pathway. And we'll give you 30 seconds or so. But getting specific is fine, even if I don't understand what you're talking about. Um, just uh, I wanted to pause to encourage you to think about this part and how it would apply to a digital portfolio. Thank you, Steve. You want you want students to be able to produce a video essay or photo essay in that digital media pathway. Thank you. All right. Apollo says we want students to have a better understanding of the role of educators in the development of student learning behavior. So it sounds like an educator type pathway. Very cool. Suzanne wants students to develop and implement creative solution to, to solutions to complex problems. Um, convey and use different platforms for video and photo editing. Sounds like the pathway my own student is in. I have a senior in high school and they are doing lots of digital media stuff right now that I don't know. Fashion design, demonstrate your um, ability to design fashion or, or, or a specific aspect of fashion. Excellent. Give folks another couple of seconds. want students to analyze, oh, law and legal, like specifically analyze law and legal uh, issues. Understand beginning to advanced levels of dance technique and different types of dance, ballet, modern, jazz, understanding anatomy. I am not much of a dancer, but this does look like a cool project. I can totally see this happening on a digital portfolio. Okay, I'm going to move on. If you if you continue to add things, that's great. Um, but let me show you what I was thinking with this. Yeah, baking a cake, perfect. So, the reason why I wanted to mention that is sometimes um, when I try to get people to give digital portfolios a shot, they're like, "Well, okay, what's on what's on this page? What's on that page? What do I have them add? What do I not have them add?" and those things that a lot of you are listing and the things that some of you might be thinking but you didn't type in some of those essential skills and outcomes should probably be the titles of individual pages on a student's career pathway section of their digital portfolio so i'm imagining a, a website with one of the tabs is my um, dance pathway and under that tab are things like um, anatomy or um, advanced dance technique for ballet, advanced or uh, intermediate dance technique for ballet, um, applying what they've learned in the medical field. Uh, oh, co creating complex Word documents and Excel documents and PowerPoint presentations. These are definitely things that could be titles of pages where students uh, add their evidence of learning images and videos and documents 
as well as maybe uh, typed or video or audio reflections of that learning. Uh, basically taking the evidence of their learning and giving some context to it. And um, my, this slide is, um, again, part of this whole presentation is about how um, implementation of digital portfolios is is also a way to facilitate UDL, Universal Design for Learning. Um, you have clear goals in your pathways. You're listing them now. You, you've, you've started to list them. You have industry standards you're trying to get students to meet. Um, you have pathway goals. Um, a lot of your students get uh, certificates or something else on their diplomas when they graduate if they finish all the components of your pathways. So you have clear goals. And a digital portfolio is a tool to give students the flexible means of demonstrating that they've achieved those clear goals. So we know what we want students to learn in these pathways. A digital portfolio is a flexible way of getting students to share that, whether it's like I said, a video, audio, images of uh, their work, images of themselves performing um, uh, things that they created um, all of those can be reflected on a digital portfolio. I, I'm not um, going to pretend like every single thing can be reflected um, on a digital portfolio, but a lot of it can. And it could really go a long way, especially for CTE programs of getting students to, to share their learning in a way that's way more meaningful than like a worksheet or a multiple choice test or something. That's not why students are in CTE pathways. They want to they want something more authentic and real than that. And I think digital portfolio is a way to help make that happen. And uh, getting back to one of my statements earlier about um, rich learning stories and empowering students to tell their learning story. I, I like this graphic. This is actually, I, I did a couple of screenshots from a larger graphic, but there's one idea of uh, the teacher owns the learning, the teacher owns the grade and um, the teacher writes the grade on the student work and they pat the student on the head. And there's the idea, the school idea, I think that this represents learning. You're getting good grades, you're doing your learning. I think digital portfolios allow a different kind of uh, learning story where it's the students who own it and the students who choose how to represent it. And the students, yes, they demonstrate it to the teacher, but they can demonstrate it to anybody else or the portfolio does. And this is not easy work. This doesn't just magically happen. This takes practice for students, but hopefully uh, by the time they leave us, instead of saying uh, at a job interview or, or somewhere else, um, how do you feel like you're ready for applying with our company? Well, I'm ready because I, I definitely got an A plus in my, in my Excel spreadsheet class. Uh, that's nice, an A plus is neat, but it would be much more valuable uh, to be able to articulate and give evidence of those exact skills that, that were learned in the class. Yes, student-led portfolio, student, like uh, I love the idea of using a, a digital portfolio where students are going through uh, on their own and explaining back to the teacher or the parent or the, the, the community or a panel these are the things I learned in class. These are the things I learned in this course or in this unit. And students are leading it, students are saying it. It's not the, the, the learning belongs to the student anyway, right? So we should help them develop the skills of uh, sharing it, explaining it. And um, of course, I definitely see a, a obvious link between a digital portfolio where students are demonstrating their skills, demonstrating growth, all the things that they accomplished, things that are highly valued in the post-secondary world, and a resume. When students um, leave high school, I, I certainly remember my time leaving high school. Those are these. What's that? Yeah, those get hard. Keto bites? Oh, you're not gonna like them. Give me some of that stuff. Okay, I don't think that question was for me. So, um, a resume. I did not um, have much of a resume when I left high school. I didn't have a lot of work experience or anything. And it was weird um, to realize that I had taken all these classes and I didn't have much to put on my resume. A digital portfolio, I think, would help our students see the skills that they have developed that they could place on a resume. Um, or if they're in a CTE pathway, they have ideally some pretty demonstrable um, skills to show off. Like I know how to do all these things 
And I know I can show you and prove it to you because you can look at my website if you'd like. And a, a website is something, I know we have like our protected domains and everything um, for our districts, like my district um, student accounts kind of die after they graduate, but a student can still make a copy of their website before they graduate and take it along with them and use it as a resume. And so at my school, um, I'm at El Cajon Valley High School, and to, to try to encourage people to use digital portfolios and give them a try, I, I put them, I get to control the school website too, so it's convenient. I get to put digital portfolios on our homepage. There's a link that takes you to digital portfolios. And a lot of these, frankly, are uh, started without much added. Uh, but I, I'm heartened that a good number of these are, it's obvious that students are adding to them and teachers are having students add to them. And I wanted to show just a few examples. Um, I won't get too deep into it because I want to get to some technical stuff later about how to make this work at your school or your district. So uh, Mr. Namimatsu, he teaches AP US history, and he had the idea of getting students to create digital portfolios or digital artifacts of learning as a way to represent the, 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 the fact that students understand the content before taking the test. So instead of, he, he used to just have students like take lots of notes and listen to his lectures. And, and he was uh, thinking that that's not enough and he wanted something more. And we worked together on making a cool project and his scores have actually gone up. It's a small sample size because he's only been doing this for a couple of years, but on average, his scores are higher uh, so you could make, I think, I'd like to make the argument that uh, creating a digital portfolio to represent learning causes the learning to be a little deeper um, than not. Uh, Mrs. Variotti, she's our science department chair, and she does this cool thing where um, for, a, for a final exam almost, she has students um, create a page uh, to represent the big ideas that students had to learn in that unit. And she has a whole um, she has a whole set of uh, instructions around this and what kind of evidence she wants students to add and and what kind of uh, reflection she wants students to have and I think this is a great idea. Getting more into CTE stuff, uh, we have uh, Mrs. Castagnera, uh, special education ch uh, department chair. She has a, um, a peer tutor program where uh, uh, students are, are paired up with a student with special needs and they help that student um, identify their goals and, and improve their communication. And she has her students create a, pages of their digital portfolio to document this work and to share it. And at least one uh, colleague of mine whose daughter goes to the school and she served as a peer tutor, um, this is actually opening up career options for her that she didn't even consider before. And she wasn't on her radar, but she realized after doing this that she really did like helping another person uh, achieve their goals, helping a person uh, with special needs um, improve their, their skills around communication and other things. And you see these pictures showing a, a couple of folks next to a student kind of doing a, a student-led portfolio. Uh, this is a scholarship uh, group who um, kind of went over uh, a student's digital portfolio with them as part of the scholarship award process just to, to see the cool things that they did. And I mentioned arts, media, and entertainment uh, pathway. This is Brent Ford. He is our arts, media, and entertainment leader. And he is um, bought in with digital portfolios completely. Everything he has his students doing is with um, digital media and digital media is something that's really easy to put on a digital portfolio. So as students um, complete different tasks in his, in, his, uh, in his program, he has them display it on their page and put in the videos they're making as they create podcasts. He has them adding that as they create graphics, they add that to their portfolios. It's a really uh, cool use of portfolios, I think, very much a CTE item. Uh, Ricardo asks, is it portable? Will the students have access to the portfolio after graduating? They will if they make a copy of it. And I uh, have a little um, message that I send to seniors with instructions on how to make a copy of their digital portfolio. Some items um, might go away, but I actually haven't seen that happen. Like I thought once a student's account went away that everything the student ever created went away. It doesn't go away. The student just can't log in and access it anymore. So it's there. 
And when a student creates a copy of their digital portfolio or even shares their school digital portfolio with a personal account, it stays alive. And students, it is, it is a portable item in that case, and they take it with them after graduation. And I've got a, a, an example of that actually right here. This is Tuka Wafi. She's now attending UC Irvine, sort of. She's one of the folks that's doing the distance learning um, uh, version of college. But she um, shared with me, I heard from Brent Ford uh, that, I, hey, have you heard of Tuka? She's definitely getting this job and she used her digital portfolio from my class for her job interview, again, her job interview. And she's continuing to add to her um, digital portfolio as she learns the, the media stuff that she's doing, the, the computer science stuff that she's doing at, at UC Irvine. And I reached out to Tuka again a couple of weeks ago when I was gonna be doing this presentation and just ask her again, like, hey, Tuka, is this still true about you? Are you, do you use your digital portfolio? And did you use it for a job interview? And she said, absolutely, I still use it. I still add to it. Um, not every student is going to be a power user like Tuka, but I think it speaks to the potential of digital, <laughs> yes, the digital uh, portfolio usage. And she said it was okay for me to add her Instagram. And I added, feel free to say hi to Tuka if you ever see her on the internet. Um, so at all of these samples, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining as ways to, to show value for the learning process. Um, and CTE is very much tied into what skills are students actually learning um, and how can we demonstrate that and how can we share that? So if you wouldn't mind, again, in the chat, I'm gonna ask you, uh, this might be one of the last times I'll, I'll bug you uh, to, to share, but what could a digital portfolio show about a person's learning that a person's transcripts couldn't? what aspect of learning gets rep could be better represented on a portfolio built up over time compared to the scores, the transcripts. Hmm, absolutely. Growth, the process, yes. A clip, a video clip. You're right, you can't put a video clip on a transcript showing that a student knows how to put down that perfect weld, but you can make a video of it. Showing understanding, showing experience, yeah. Showing experience is huge. Like, how are you going to show um, work experience? How, like, what are you going to talk about it as? Like, I have a certain number of hours volunteering at a place. Great. It'd be better, though, if you could couple that with some images or video or um, demonstrations of skills you learned. Qualitative aspects of performance. Yeah, the stuff that's not just easy to measure with a number, right? The stuff that um, requires a little bit more nuance than a number can provide as far as providing evidence. Yes, growth, tra tangible proof, yes. A physical product being produced, yes, that's huge in CTE, right? It's hard to combine uh, physical evidence with a, a list of numbers or grades. Um, yeah, the soft skills, applying that to the real world. An image, yes, an image can be more powerful than words. Excellent. So. It seems like a lot of you have already hit on my next part, but yes. Um, if we think of, of learning, the, the iceberg analogy of learning is you only see some stuff on the surface, but there's so much more underneath it. That's, that's this whole idea, but yes. On the top, we might see scores and grades in school. Like that's the stuff that's valued. That's the stuff that, that we bug students about all the time, but um, it's harder to measure and represent all the stuff that would have to go under that. But a digital portfolio makes it a little bit easier. You can show the thinking and the evidence and the way students explored and the way they had a trial and error around their learning, the process, the growth. It's a chance to tell just a richer, fuller learning story. So that part of the presentation is all the why um, if you already came in here thinking, listen, guy, I already know that I want to give this a shot. I've heard the good things. Um, why did you spend the first 25, 30 minutes on the why? I've already got that. Okay. Sorry if you're, if you're one of those folks. If you're here for the more technical stuff or slightly more technical stuff, that's this next part. And it's not going to get too into the weeds. If you are really interested in giving digital portfolios a shot um, 
and the stuff that I'm about to show you and the resources that I'm going to give you at the end aren't enough or you run into any roadblocks, again, my email is going to be at the end. I very much welcome reaching out. I still have people that I've, I've helped. And every year when they set up their digital portfolio uh, systems for the year, they reach out and like, hey, can you double check my formula or this one formula that I made isn't working in my Google spreadsheet. Can you take a look at it? I'm glad to do that. It's fun. And, um, and I'm just interested in that stuff. So glad to do it. So the nuts and bolts of digital portfolios beyond this sales pitch. How do we do it? Like, it's a good, okay, Anthony, it seems like a good idea. I'll give it a shot. How do we do it? I tried to boil it down to a few things, but um, one is you're gonna have to decide probably what kind of website platform to use. And for me, I'm in this Google Sites or Google Suite district. Everything we do is Google. We're, we're in Google Docs and we're doing Google Slides and we're doing Google, um, Sheets, Google Forms, Google Drawing. So I'm using Google Sites. All the students already have a Google account in my district. It's just an easy um, pivot for me. And um, it's quote unquote free. I know um, as if students, if you're using Google tools outside of a school district, um, there's and probably inside, they're collecting all our data and everything. And I understand uh, there's that side of it, but it is something that wouldn't cost a student money to continue after they leave us. So Google Sites is what I'm what I'm giving, what I'm trying. I know there's WordPress, there's a company called Portfolium, and, and there's blogging websites for younger people in elementary. There's Seesaw, uh, Bulb is one that's out there. So there are a lot of options. I'm going to focus on Google Sites. And uh, for my students, a lot of the times they made a Google Site as uh, part of a thing we have them do their freshman year. And then they don't do much with it their freshman year. And then they come back to 10th grade and they're one of their teachers, or maybe they got into a pathway and the teacher is saying, hey, we're going to add your Google site. Students are like, do I have one? I don't remember. They can just go back to Google, Google sites to find it again. I know they can also find it in their drive. And one thing I try to um, make clear is we're talking about one Google site. Um, it's really hard to have multiple portfolios for multiple classes. One of the values of a portfolio is digital portfolio is everything's in one spot and you can make additional pages and additional tabs for other classes, but one portfolio that grows and grows and grows over time. So um, I highly encourage that. If, if, uh, if that doesn't work for you, I totally get it, but um, I would encourage you to try to have one, especially if you're trying to do this uh, school-wide. And the three things that you want to plan for is uh, for like as you as students create pages and put stuff on those pages to represent learning. One, what is the learning goal uh, of the page? And it's I think it's a good idea to have one or maybe one big idea or one essential learning goal per page. Don't try to do too much on one page. And page again, think of uh, the book analogy for a website. A website is a book and the individual pages are like the pages of a website. So one page per learning goal. The layout, especially if students are new to this, and pretty much all of them are new to this, you got to tell students what you want the page to look like. I suggest drawing it. And um, a collection and feedback system. I have uh, something I made that I'm, I'm going to share with you at the end that you are very free to use and copy. It's basically Google Forms, Google Sheets, and Google Sites. Um, stuff that doesn't cost money. And uh, everything I learned about spreadsheets over the past eight years or so has, have been, be has been because I had to solve a problem with um, collection and display of digital portfolios. And now I have some useful skills around spreadsheets. So again, the learning goal, think of it, uh, I'm an English teacher, so I think of it in terms of a thesis type statement of this page is going to prove that I learned blank. Um, like that should be something near the top of the page or even incorporated into the title of the page. And again, if you're going to have clear goals and flexible means, you've got to start with the clear goals. You got to communicate that clear goal to the student. It's, I've seen digital portfolio efforts fail because um, teachers might get a little nebulous with what the goal of the page was. So be clear. Be clear with students about the goal. Again, it can be big units from your or big um, learning goals from your unit projects. 
Um, for CTE, we're looking at uh, specific skills maybe that are super valuable that you want students to demonstrate. Layout, um, again, draw it. Google Sites has nice tools um, that are drag and drop for layout features. Like I want to have a, a picture with some text next to it. They give you a layout for that. So you don't have to, that's another thing I like about Google Sites. You don't have to know a lot about websites in order to be building one. Um, it's, it's a pretty intuitive tool. And then as far as what goes on the page, um, these are just some tips. I won't go through each one now, um, but you could definitely come back to this and see different ways to use it. For CTE, it's you can make it CTE centered. You want a, a page, like you can even talk to industry uh, professionals, like what, what do you want to see evidence of uh, on my kids or my students' digital portfolios? And that can be your guide as far as what goes on there. And again, whatever you do want them to do on the page, you gotta kind of show them where you wanna put it, at least at first for, and for a while until students get used to representing their learning this way. Because imagine from their point of view, they've been trained a certain way in school to represent their learning. This is blowing their mind to do this and it takes them time to get this. Um, and again, I've drawn it. You gotta tell them exactly where, where you want this stuff. This is a, a, a brief video, I won't show it, but. Um, as a, a science teacher was explaining to the students what uh, she wanted them to put on their page, I was drawing up on some, some paper. Uh, and I basically told students, well, like, I'm listening to your teacher tell you what to put on your portfolio. This is how I suggest you do it. Uh, and they found that really useful. So um, they, they need that guidance. Collection and feedback. This is the third thing you got to think about. And I've made a digital portfolio URL collection and display system. And I want to, oh, if you're using Google Classroom, I highly discourage you from collecting links just by having students send them to you in Google Classroom. Um, in, with Google Docs, when you share a link in Google Classroom, like if a student shares it with you, it transfers ownership from the student to you. It does the same thing with, with Google Sites, uh, last I heard. Um, so if a student gives you a link to their Google site, they no longer own it. Now you own it. And if you're one of the teachers that forgets to return stuff in Google Classroom, uh, the student is going to have a tough time on their next project when they go to edit it and they don't see their digital portfolio anywhere. Um, where is it? Well, who was your teacher last quarter? Oh, it was Mr. So-and-so. You've got to go tell Mr. So-and-so to return your digital portfolio so you can edit it. So that's one little hiccup that could potentially throw things for a loop. Um, I don't want to talk a lot about um, evaluation or feedback. This is going to be so variable depending on what you want to see on your portfolios. I do like the idea of using a rubric and being clear with students about the things you're looking for, but part of the value of a portfolio is letting students kind of be free with how they show what they know. So um, remember that as you're, as you're evaluating. I know you um, could do a rubric, you could just give them verbal feedback and um, they could peer evaluate or you could just try it without a, without a, a, an evaluation necessarily. Just like, hey, this is going to, thank you, Leo. That sounds okay, we have five minutes left. Um, this is just going to be a representation of your learning. Okay, so the portfolio and display system, there's a link in the resources that I'll show you uh, at the end, but it's really, again, I tried to boil it down to three steps. Step one, create a website or a place for you to, to house your collection and display system. Step two, I've got a Google form and a Google sheet that I have for you to make a copy of and you link them together and um, make sure they're shared publicly. And three, creating that collection and display page uh, and displaying it all on a page for students to submit their stuff and they can see your page, they can see everybody else's page and you end up with something like this. And I actually have it open on a tab. I'll go here and it looks just like this. Here's a link to a Google form. Um, I'm going to show you a link to this page. This is my this is my resources. Maybe some of you saw it, but it's right here: the digital portfolio URL collection system. And there are three goals, like I just showed you. And for each one of these, 
um, there's a video guide of me showing you how to do it. So there's this guide for step one, a guide for step two, and the same for step three. And if you want to give it a shot and see how it works sometime, you can click on digital portfolio curation. And if you fill out this Google form, you'll see how links start to show up down here. And yes, um, it's actually whether or not the question is whether or not to make student portfolios public and how to protect them from the outside world. You can control that within Google Sites. If you do want the students and you, you do want students to share it publicly, then you can tell them that please share it publicly. If you want to be a little bit more private and protect student privacy or leave that decision in the students hands, you can definitely manage in Google Site Publishing how widely you want this viewed. They could make it so only their teacher can view it. Um, it's all, it's very similar to like sharing a Google, Google Doc, how you can control who sees it and who doesn't. And the, one of the last slides, I think, yes, is this slide. This is me saying thank you. This is a link that takes you to all the resources. It's this presentation, as well as the digital portfolio URL collection page. Um, I definitely want to leave a few minutes for any questions. And in a moment, I'm going to put up the um, um, certificate for, for completion that you can take a picture of. Oh, and you'll receive an evaluation at the end of the day. Any feedback would be great. And what else? Oh, my email is here. Again, I'm serious about that. I, it's not a hassle for me to respond to emails about something that I'm actually very interested in. I'm interested in getting more people to demonstrate learning this way. I would love it to have schools go gradeless and, and have something like a digital portfolio replace the whole idea of grades. I, I don't like grading. I don't know a teacher that does like grading. So um, does my district have a policy of private or public portfolios? We did not have that policy. Um, we it defaults to uh, being shared within the district domain. So everybody in the district can see each other's stuff by default, but as an individual student still has their own um, power. And I think that's appropriate that they have their own power to uh, restrict it more. So not very many people can see it or uh, to make it uh, more public if they want more people to see it. And I think it's appropriate. I wish more tech companies out there or tech tech tools that we use out there, we're a little bit more transparent about what's public and what's private information. Um, but at least as far as Google goes and Google Sites goes, we can control that. You can control that. The students can control that. Awesome. Thank you for the feedback in the chat so far, folks. Uh, definitely reach out. I'd love to hear uh, more. Um, if you're doing digital portfolios and you're having lots of success and it's, you're doing it totally different from what I'm talking about. I'd love to hear about it because even though we are using them at our site, I wish more of us were using it and we're using them in our district. I wish more of us were using it. Um, it's uh, a slow change. You know how, how education is. Stuff changes slowly, but I would love for it to change a little faster. Um, I have thought about using LinkedIn. I think part of the reason why we're doing this is um, it's one less thing to sign into for students as they get started because um, everything is a Google sign-on in our district. Yeah. LinkedIn, I haven't played with it a lot. I just know of it as a powerful um, thing to connect with future employers. Portfolium is a company, I think, connected with LinkedIn, and uh, they're doing some cool things uh, aligning with CSUs um, and employers after that. Um, it looks really neat, uh, but I don't have enough people using digital portfolios to really make that as powerful as it could be. Oh, FERPA. Okay, maybe that's part of it for LinkedIn. Okay, I'm going to show the certificate. Um, and thank you, everyone, for coming by again. I appreciate it. I was pleasantly surprised to see how many visitors were, were coming to this. So thank you so much. And any final questions as we roll out? So this is your host. <laughs> I'm just making sure that you take a picture of the certificate for proof of your attendance in case you uh, get credit, you need to get credit or whatever for it. Just that's a, a brief reminder.